about 100 years, there have been a series of mathematical papers published in the mainstream scientific literature dealing with higher dimensions. We are familiar with length, width, and height, three dimensions. Three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. In relativity, it's called space-time as a contraction. However, this rather arcane subculture of scientists, mathematicians, topologists, have been dealing routinely with four dimensions spatially, five, six, seven, all the way up now to, I believe, 26 individual dimensions. And the mathematics to describe them are literally unreadable, so I'm not even going to begin to try to get into it. The bottom line, however, was that as I read these papers, it became very apparent that in these mathematical treatises, there were descriptions of events that would be occurring in three dimensions if you were modeling things going on in four dimensions or higher and seeing projections, shadows, back into our familiar three dimensions. Now, all of these papers dealt with this as theory, as simply, you know, intellectual gamesmanship, mathematical doodling, back of the envelope things. But we're not supposed to really take the idea of other dimensions seriously, right? Well, one of the things that these papers predicted was that if you were to look at the right kind of sphere rotating in the right way in three dimensions, what you're really looking at is more of the sphere in higher dimensions projected back into three dimensions, and that would produce vorticular roiling motion in the mathematical equation, in the spatial transform, and those roiling vorticular motions would be focused at 19.5 north and south. There is a problem described in this literature called the problem of the 27 lines on the general cubic surface. It turns out to be an elegant description of a ordinary cube in three space and what it looks like in higher dimensions four, five, six dimensions. And tallying up the number of angles in the cube, the number, there are two interpenetrating tetrahedra as part of this solution. And in fact, there is a set of hyper tetrahedra that mathematically will fall out as shadows from these mathematical solutions. And as we looked at this figure, it became obvious that if we look at the solar system, we might just might, if we were seeing the upwelling point of this mass, we might see the inwelling point of the same mass. The theory being that if you really have a hypersphere, a sphere, a planet that is existing in more than our three dimensions, as it rotates, there will be a set of physical forces set up that will transmit back a structure, a signature, that you might see on the planet, as we are seeing the 19.5 vortex, which is the first hallmark of any good science. You make a prediction, and then you see if the prediction is fulfilled. Well, when we look at planets, what the prediction said from these papers now, applied to real spinning objects, not theoretical spheres, but real spinning bowls of liquid and gas planets, was that we should see around the poles, particularly the North Pole, a hexagonal pattern, perhaps formed in the clouds. And then I remembered that in 1988, a scientist named D.A. Godfrey had published in Icarus a small paper dealing with time-lapse photography the Voyager missions had taken of the North Pole of Saturn and computer rectified, and lo and behold, there, around the North Pole, is a perfect hexagon over and over again. And the hexagon is composed of layers of clouds. There are three bands. And the clouds are racing backward at about 300 miles per hour. And they're making the turns, each of the turns. The pattern as a whole is rotating with the internal clock radio period of the planet, which is slightly uh, over 10 hours, I believe, 10 hours, 14 minutes, or something like that. That's crucial in a physics because what it means is the pattern is linked to a property called the bulk 
angular momentum, the mass spinning of this physical object in three dimensions. Now, I mean, look at that. This is, this is stunning because science is prediction. We now have two specific signatures predicted by a formerly theoretical abstract subculture of mathematical scientists called topologists. And their predictions are that if you rotate a hypersphere, meaning a sphere that extends into more than one three dimensions that we're familiar with, the effect back from these higher dimensions will give you signatures at 19.5 and a hexagonal pattern in the idealized solution around the rotational pole of rotation. And that, in fact, is exactly what we see. Now, what is that saying? It is saying, screen on, it is saying that perchance, just perchance, during the Voyager mission, we have now secured data that at least one planet in our solar system is somehow connected mathematically to a higher dimensional state space. <laughs>